Hello and welcome. This is James from the DSO Imager channel. Uh, I recently completed uh, capturing data on the Eastern Veil vale Nebula, also known as the BAT. Um, I've got a total of 30 hours uh, baked into this uh, image. And so I'm going to go over my uh, workflow processing on this in PixInsight. For this image, I used my Celestron Edge uh, HD8 the 8-inch version. Uh, the camera was a ZWO ASI 294 mono using BIN 2. Uh, the mount was uh, a Skywatch EQ6R. The filters were the astronomic 6 narrowband uh, nanometer narrowband filters. Uh, just hydrogen and uh, O3. And the uh, integration, uh, it was um, 20 hours of HA first 10 hours of 03. So here we have on the screen, these are the uh, stacked uh, subs. I should say the stacked image for each filter. So here's our HA. And the reason I went uh, so deep, uh, is in particular on the HA, is I just wanted to get a good resolution on all these uh, little bits of filaments that are in here. And here's our O3. All right, so I ran dynamic background extraction against both of them, and then I ran uh, deconvolution. Uh, you can see I have the PSF for HA and O3, and uh, you did use a range mask this time and um, for each of them and then of course we have the star mask so the result of that was this over here so here's our HA prior to co combination and this is with uh, deconvolution applied and uh, same deal with uh, O3 Oops. So, I mean, this looks pretty good. I mean, it doesn't, it's not even that noisy. You get enough data and, and noise uh, doesn't, isn't really much of an issue. Alrighty, so I combined them using the LRGB combination tool, HOO. So H went to red and oxygen went to green and blue. And this is the result. So now I did do uh, color calibration on this. Uh, I just did background neutralization and then the standard color calibration. Uh, and then after that I stretched and I used the stretch. Uh, I used um, the easy processing suite soft stretch. Uh, so after that, you can see here, I'll remove the mask. Uh, what happened here is I took the stars out and then with this mask, I'm using it to uh, desaturate the background here. Basically what we're wanting to do is remove this uh, this O3 haze. And there, uh, you can see the impact there. Also darkening it. I'm trying to pull out some of these details in here. And I feel like um, I didn't do a good enough job, honestly, on this. You may notice some banding here. That is actually a quirk of the 294 Amano. Uh, it doesn't handle being starved for information well. And so it's, it's not too much of an issue in broadband, but in narrow band, if you're not getting enough signal or you have areas like this that are empty, uh, you'll get this banding. And usually what you have to do to get around this is either increase gain or increase uh, exposure length. And now, typically, I've been using gain 120 and 10-minute uh, subs with narrow band. Uh, but I wanted to see if I can get away with shorter subs to maybe help with the um, resolution. So I bumped the gain up a little bit to 130. And these are with 300-second uh, subs. Uh, and I, I think on a, a 
image it's covering the full frame it's okay but but for for this you can see that I'm, I'm going to be fighting this and that's one of the reasons why my final picture uh, it does end up with a pretty dark uh, background but, I mean other than this this area here and you can see some of it up here the processing on this was actually fairly straightforward And uh, this is where I pretty much ended up. So yeah, I think I kind of hurt these fainter details in here. I was actually, uh, I'll be honest, 30 hours. I was, I was tempted to go a little bit more. You can also see a problem here uh, with... Um, so I had an issue where I lost my sequence and had to recreate it, and I was off a little bit on the... Uh, the framing just a tiny bit uh, but still I, I think this actually wasn't too bad so uh, next I decided to work on the stars and this is what the stars look like first thing I did was um, morphological transformation I'll zoom in and, and forward to the steps so you can see what morphology did there and then I pulled back on curves a little bit more. And then uh, here I believe I probably boosted saturation a little bit. Yeah. Oh, actually right here. So see this? See how the star is kind of green? Uh, this is where I use SCNR. So I use SCNR to remove all the green. That gives us our blue. Uh, and then I invert and subtract green again. So you can still see like a little bit of green here on the inverse. So we subtract, remove green. All this blue should make yellow stars now. Yep. And so this is where my star field finished. And uh, put them together and this is what I get. So I use pixel math and I use the um, the formula that's highlighted in star exterminator uh, if you go here. So that one down there that that's the one I used. So then I took this image into Photoshop, tweaked it a little bit more and the final result was this. So uh, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this uh, picture. Like I said, the, the background is a little bit darker than I would prefer, uh, but the details are really nice in here. Um, so yeah, overall, I'm satisfied with this one. Now, uh, before I end this video, I just want to show that I'm not actually quite done with this one yet. Uh, I am working on a two panel mosaic. So here you can see this is just a test. I took this way in the early part of uh, gathering data on this where it's uh, about four hours of HA on each each panel. And um, I had decided to focus on this panel because I was concerned the way the weather's been. I was concerned if I was going to get enough uh, clear nights without any wind to get what I needed. Uh, but now that I've concluded on this, and I've got 30 hours here on this panel currently, I think I'm around 10 hours. So we'll image just a little bit more, and, uh, and then maybe you'll see a two-panel mosaic on this one. So that's pretty much it. Uh, if you like this, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe, please uh, give me a subscription. Uh, you'll... You'll get a lot of videos like this, along with gear reviews and uh, a few other things. So with that said, uh, I'd like to wish everyone clear skies and a good evening.